let's hope that I get to see a delivery. And one person in my class said that they had delivered a placenta on their first day. I'm like, wow, that's kind of crazy, but cheers to a good day of labor and delivery. <laughs> It is the night before my first labor and delivery shift. It will be a 12 hour shift spent in the hospital. So I went to Target as I showed y'all and picked up some frozen dinners because I'm just like, it's giving, may or may not be having time to cook dinner. I don't know if my mother will have that time either, but I do have a real meal for tomorrow's lunch. But in the event I get hungry again, I'm going to pack a frozen dinner. So I have been looking on Amazon for a bigger lunch bag. So if y'all have any recommendations for a lunch bag, please post them below in the comments because like I'm trying to fathom spending 12 or more hours in one place. That means like all three meals would be eaten there. So I'm not sure if my stomach is even going to allow me to eat breakfast in the morning, whatever. Um, I wanted to pack my book bag, but I didn't get to do that because I had to put up the groceries, empty the dishwasher, cook my Brussels sprouts so I could have dinner for tonight. Was thinking about going to work out and I was like, yeah, nah, cause I want to be asleep by 9.15 and it is 9.11, so. So I was gonna sleep by 9.30. Cause I also want to read up on case files. Since I am on labor and delivery, I want to read on preterm labor. And then the other case I wanted to read is preterm premature rupture of membranes and intra-amniotic infection. So I might save case 18 for the morning and just read case 17 tonight. It is only page 180 to 184, so they're super short. And then I'll go over like some brief questions to review. I'm very, very excited. I was literally off the whole week, but we had didactics this morning, which is just coming in for a lecture. It was more like a team-based learning session on gynecology so we did an abnormal bleeding i think it was abnormal uterine bleeding case and um chronic pelvic pain so knowing all those different things so i'll have that paper with me tomorrow too in the event you know like i want to review it and they also tell us to bring our computer because there is no room for us in the end as in there will not be a desktop computer for me so bring my laptop bring my charger I'll be sure to bring my Apple Watch charger, my iPhone charger, like all of the things, which also means, oh, if I bring my computer, I don't have to bring my iPhone charger, forget, new um, charger, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm super, super excited and very excited to take y'all with me on my first shift and even better, my mother is coming to pick me up in the morning. Love that woman, okay? So let me get to this reading so I can KO. Oh, I need to set an alarm. Let's see if she gonna pick me up. I don't wanna be rushing in the morning. So Alexa, set an alarm for 5.15 a.m. Second alarm set for 5.15 a.m. tomorrow. All right, so we're doing it. Let's hope that I get to see a delivery. And one person in my class said that they had delivered a placenta on their first day. I'm like, wow, that's kind of crazy, but cheers to a good day of labor and delivery. Good night, y'all.
How is it just, um, what, 6.02 in the morning and I am extremely tired. <laughs> I went to bed on time and everything, but no, whatever. So I'm packing my computer, my iPad case files for ob -Gyne. Um, Cause there's still some cases I want to read up on. Hopefully I have a little bit of time before the shift starts. My friend also told me to bring a blanket because it could be pretty cold. Um, I got a scrub cap, which I guess I could take out of this. So I have a scrub cap and I think it should be lined and satin. Yes, it's satin lined. So my hair is protected. I won this off of Instagram. It's Medicaps. Let me put that up there. Won this off Instagram a while ago, but I was like, I'm gonna keep it for when I actually start surgery. And OB gun is surgery. And then I need my stethoscope. So I have all of this and I also have um, a lunch is packed. I have so many snacks like apples, grapes, cheese, granola. I even got some candy and stuff because I was like, I might need a sugar rush. At some point, um, I can be leisurely dressed because once I get to the hospital, I'll be changing into my scrubs. Um, yeah, and of course I have water because, oh, not this is filler. Um, sure, I'm gonna need to stay hydrated, but not too hydrated because I'm gonna have to keep going to the restroom. Either way, I'm super excited. I woke up 30 minutes before my alarm to use the restroom and why was my heart beating fast? Cause I'm just like, oh my gosh, I could be helping to deliver somebody's baby to today. Like our program director was telling us like, you may not remember all of the patient's lives that you touch, but they, especially someone bringing new life to the world, they could probably potentially remember you forever. So be kind, be pleasant and watch your face. <laughs> like even if you see something that's so different or abnormal, poker face on and just remember that like this is new life so this is going to be a very exciting experience so so grateful that my mother's picking me up she'll be here in five minutes so gotta get ready for that i think i'm done though getting ready but you know never hurts to do one more check so let me do that oh my mother bought me this little sparkling bottle for passing my family medicine shelf exam she's so kind now i'm running out to get to ob <laughs> thanks mother you're welcome back. All right, Tyler. Oh, first thing for OB. <laughs> I've literally asked four different people how to get to the labor and delivery unit. Who child, this is why I arrived early. Number. Plug new size. Post emergency surgery. Can't lie, I'm a little tired, but I get to leave 45 minutes early because the residents were like, it has slowed down. If nobody objects, please go home. Enjoy your Saturday. I'm like, yes, Lord. 
It was all good until I went downstairs with my scrubs on and I had to go back upstairs to return them because you only get one free credit a day. And then a friend told me I could have taken them home and returned them in the morning and then checked out some more the following day. Whoops, now I know. I am so tired. <laughs> well, up extremely early. I got to the hospital 30 minutes before my shift because I knew I had to get lost and I did get lost. I asked three or four different people, how do I get to the labor and delivery unit? Which elevators do I take to get there? Once I got there, I was there and I knew what to do. Um, at the end of the shift, Okay, so you have to get scrubs from there and you only have one credit to get one pair of scrubs a day because they want to ensure you return their clothing. Y'all, the residents let me leave early. I was out so fast. And I'm waiting in the lobby because my friend was coming to pick me up. And I still had on scrubs. I was like, oh my gosh. And of course, this is a like password protected room. So you need card access or it's a protected room and I don't have access to it. So I have to ask someone to give me access. I get in the room and realize I still have the scrubs on. How am I returning if I still got them on? So now here I am trying to hurry up and change in this room where anybody can walk in at any time. I was like, I am exhausted, I've lost my mind. So I literally have a few hours before it's time to go to bed. I think a basketball game is coming on. Might actually be on right now, either 6.30 or 7.30. So I turned that on, put some food, in the microwave to eat that and probably just sit on my couch until it's time to go to bed and do this thing all over again. Um, but it was great. I got to take a history of a pregnant patient, which is totally different from family medicine. Like family medicine, you go through history of present illness, review of systems, physical exam, come up with an assessment and plan. Well, everyone's in the labor and delivery unit, so I mean, the assessment is, you're gonna have a baby. <laughs> and the plan is, well, no when, but let's do it. But the a lot of the patients were planned inductions. So the resident had me to look up an article on induction of labor, which is the abbreviation IOL. And I did that. And so now I understand why they were giving misoprostone and a Foley because that helps to dilate the cervix, which is just giving more room for the baby's head to come down and through. Um, so I did get to take a history of a patient who was a scheduled induction and um, a resident when I came out the room, a second year was asking like, did they ask you, did they tell you the four main questions you need to ask? And I was like, no. So they told me the questions, which is great, and allowed me to go back into the room. So those are, um, are you having any vaginal bleeding? Has there been any known fluid or discharge, which, which would typically be had your water broken? Are you having contractions? If so, how often? And what about fetal movement? Because you want to know whether the fetus is still moving as normal or if it has decreased or increased. Um, so that was exciting. So I've been like mainly taking notes today. I did have some downtime because they say that OB is, what is it, famine or feast? So feast is everybody be having a baby at one time or famine where it's like you really just chilling. So I read some articles and then um, I was with some you world questions. I was reviewing how to write a note because I got to write my first OB note today, which was totally different than family. That's cool, I'm learning. And all in all, it was pretty cool. Um, I'm just really, really, really tired because I've been up for 13 and a half hours. And it's crazy because I used to study for this long, but you're just sitting there like constantly moving and also being in a new environment, not really know what you're doing. It's also different, but it's exciting and definitely very happy to have done this, to be here in this space, this time, this place. And I'm happy that I was able to take y'all with me. Um, yeah, it feels awkward taking out a camera in the hospital, so I definitely didn't do that at all. But, um, oh, and as a medical student, I get to help like coach moms while they're delivering, like, you know, 
maybe hold their hands or pat them, constantly let them know like you're doing a good job. Because it is hard work. Like literally someone said, this feels like a workout. And I'm like, whoo, it's a real big workout because whoo, I can't even imagine. But it was very exciting and yeah, gonna do it all over again tomorrow. All right, y'all, that's all I got, I'm tired. Let me go ahead and get this dinner and go to bed. <laughs> Bye, catch you next time.